Hello and welcome to Andre's YouTube vlog for April 5th, 2012. Well, Easter's a very short three days away and I'm um, squared away to go to the special wedding tomorrow. Now it's going to be a long trip, you know, from uh, here to the tri-state area and that's about an eight to ten hour trip. You know, you go down the mass turnpike, you go down the main turnpike, you go down turnpike after turnpike after turnpike, and after a while you feel like hypnotoad. Your eyes are crazy. Well, anyway, um, I really just came on here to uh, tell you that uh, I got a new haircut, especially for the occasion. I'll get a little closer so you can see that. That's actually the way they combed it at the hairdressers. You know, a little freaky eye effect there. Woo, woo. Okay, extreme close-up. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Well, anyway, you know, I wanted to have my hair cut like this, you know, so it wouldn't look cheesy. And I think it's one of the best haircuts, maybe the best haircuts I've actually ever had. It perfectly fits my head shape. And, you know, I look decent for the wedding. And, you know... I know there's, there's a certain uh, fascination with people looking good and with, you know, people's rooms and their houses looking good and people's entertainment looking good. And that's kind of what I wanted to discuss here today. I just got a suit for the wedding back from the um, uh, tailor. And the alterations were perfect. But I was concerned that it fit around my midriff, you know, because, you know, I'm a little bit... Uh, well and down on the backside, if you know what I mean. So, you know, I wanted to make sure it fit well, but, you know, it didn't fall down and make a big embarrassing episode for me. But all the same, you know, I kept thinking to myself, you know, and lately I've been watching a lot of things like, you know, Doctor Who, and I grew up on the original Star Trek show with uh, William Shatner, and I've seen a lot of Edward B. movies and all that kind of thing. But over the years, I've heard people just throw the word cheesy out to everything. Cheesy, tacky, um, kitsch, you know, it's so bad it's good, you know. We don't like it because it's good. We like it because it's, it, it's bad and, it, and it's corny. We laugh at it. We don't laugh with it. And, you know, <clears throat> in terms of entertainment, I mean, I don't know about clothes. Maybe it applies to clothes too, but sometimes I really wonder if people use the word cheesy or tacky or bad taste as shorthand for something that's old and out of date. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I go to uh, Target or Burlington Coat Factory and look in the shoe department and everything they have, you know, giant platform boots with big, you know, uh, you know, chunky heels, uh, elephant bell bottoms, glitter, glitter, glitter all over the place. And, you know, I heard people say, oh, the 70s and 80s were so tacky and there was so much cheesiness during that decade. Well, if it's so cheesy, then why would anybody want to go to the store and buy clothing they thought was bad? You know, I think people, again, are really deceiving themselves. They don't think these things are cheesy at all, you know. And that's one of my suspicions I've always had. Usually, people will watch an old movie or they'll dress in 70s or 80s clothing and they'll love it. They won't disparage it at all. But around their friends, they'll laugh and say, oh, oh, that's nonsense, you know. I knew a guy once, you know, um, who had a Spice Girls poster, a huge Spice Girls poster on his wall. I mean, it wasn't defamed. And he had Spice Girls CDs. And I knew he liked the Spice Girls. But, you know, around his friends, they, oh, God, they're, they're corny. I hate them. You know, I think so much of what we do in our lives is really controlled by our peer group, and we don't know it. You know, I think we judge our personal taste by our peer group. I think we judge the way we fix our hair by our peer group. I think we judge, you know, our clothing by how we feel about our peer group. You know, I think we'd rather sometimes be influenced by people than actually influence people. Because influencing people and being a trendsetter instead of a trend follower is very hard to do. Now with me, I stay away from trends. I stay away from the idea of trendiness. It's just not my kind of thing. And, you know, going to this wedding and being in Central Park and just, you know, having this whole fiasco occur, <laughs> you know, makes me realize sometimes that, um, you know, I guess no matter how I cut it, I'm just not capable of being that phony and much of a trend follower. 
I don't know if I'm a trendsetter, but that would appeal to me more than following people. And, I mean, if you actually m break it down mathematically and know the mathematics of it, I would say, especially in my neck of the woods, I would say that about, oh, conservatively, 70, 75 people are definitely trend followers all the way. They listen to the music their friends listen to, they have the hairstyles their friends have, and they dress the way their friends do. They may not want to admit it. They may all, in fact, think they're being very individual. But, on the inside, as they say, it's a whole other story. <laughs> I think that's somebody else's slogan. But anyway, you know, enjoy your holiday, and I'll be getting back to you for Easter. And um, have a great time, everybody.